Hello YouTubers, welcome to DIY Dharma. And here today I want to talk about storage as I'm putting a new PC together, upgrading my existing PC with a whole lot of new components. I got myself an Intel Core i7 CPU. This is the uh, Core i7-12700K. There's a, well, I'll make a video on it. I'm also doing a video on the installation, but I want to talk about storage specifically on the evolution of storage. So that if you're going to be spending money just on storage, or if you're going to be spending money on a PC, I'd like you to uh, watch this video to learn about the storage before you spend money to see what you really need, as opposed to getting something fast or getting something slow. So let's talk about the evolution of storage, uh, just some bit of history here. So in the olden days, and when I was building PCs, we had what's called hard disk drives. And um, in the 19, so these things have been around since the 1960s, not that I've been around since the 1960s, but these things have been around since the 1960s. And these were actually the size of uh, a dishwasher, so they used to call them disk washers because they were huge, and they did not hold as much storage as this one does. This one's about two terabytes. Uh, so they probably held about maybe, I don't know, 200 to 500 megs of, of storage. So they, small capacity, slow speed, but uh, they were huge. So in the 1980s or, or later on, this is what came about. These are hard disk drives. If you don't know how they work, uh, there are basically, there are uh, magnetic platters here and there are heads that spin. Uh, well, actually the platter spins, the heads go back and forth, almost very similar to a record player moving its head on, uh, moving its needle on, on a vinyl. Uh, if some of you guys have know what a record player is, but uh, the, anyway, anyway, so that's basically how it works. And you got multiple heads, multiple platters. So they read that. And then the information on here, the storage that's on here is stored by, uh, using, uh, magnetic poles, uh, North Pole and South Pole. So that's how the data is kept on there. So if you run a magnet over it or heavy duty magnet, all your data will get erased or corrupted. Uh, not to mention these are slow because the head needs to traverse the, the platter, so it takes time. And these also tend to tend to break over time. So hence, uh, they are, uh, they're somewhat, you know, driving around and they're slow. Uh, so all of these did evolve in terms of interfaces. They used to have what's called an ID interface and then moved on to what's called a SATA as interface serial, ATA interface. So this is the this is the SATA interface and this is the power for it. So then came out these solid state drives. A world of difference between these mag, uh, magnetic drives and I call them magnetic because that's how they they're in to these solid state drives. And the solid state drives are obviously much faster. And uh, probably they came out around 2002, maybe even before then. But that's when they were reasonably priced. Actually, they were not even reasonably priced. They were very expensive, uh, but they're much faster than than the IDE drives. And also, uh, they're much more reliable because you don't have any moving parts. There's really nothing moving on uh, in here other than all it has is in integrated circuits in here inside the plastic envelope. And you could see the uh, you could see the same kind of interface that you see here. So you have the SATA interface, and then you also have the the um, the the power interface here, which is very similar to to this one. If I were to put one on top of the other, you would see that the interface line up. So, um, and this is, this is also two terabytes. So this is two terabytes, heavy, magnetic, and, uh, slow. This is also two terabytes. Um, you could put it in your pocket. No, I just don't sit on it. And, um, you can run a magnet over it. It's not going to erase anything. The only thing that may damage these is if you have an electrical shock and there's a lot of juice that goes in, it may corrupt, uh, the, the chips. Uh, because they're, they're densely, they're densely kept inside. Uh, again, a lot of different brands make these, but these are, uh, solid state devices. As uh, the two terabyte NAND is the type of transistors they use. So, uh, um, yeah, these are much more reliable. So if you were to move your C drive, your boot up drive and your windows from this to this, it's night and day. If, as a matter of fact, if your machine is slow and you, and you're running your C drive on this, just by moving from this to this to, to these set of drives, you'll make a big, difference in how fast your machine boots up. So uh, you may not even have to change anything else if your machine is slow, just change the drive to these legacy hard drives to these solid state drives. Um, now there's a step up, which are these NVMe drives, which actually plug into your motherboard. 
So these plug into your motherboard through a SATA cable, but these plug in directly into your motherboard. So my motherboard here, the new one that I got, this uh, Pro Z6098, which I'm going to be using for my new build, has multiple slots where I could stick this in there. Now here's another SATA drive, which I'm, I'm using today. And although my motherboard doesn't have, uh, although my motherboard does not have an NVMe slot, which is what these are called, the NVMe um, type uh, device. So, so is this one. I've, uh, as you can see here, it's screwed on into the, um, actually maybe I could take off. I oh, know I have to unscrew it, but this, this connects to a PCI slot into my, into my motherboard. So this is another option to connect these. Uh, it doesn't, you know, if you don't have SATA cables and you have spare PCI slots, you could just get, so you could buy, you could basically buy one of these NVMe drives and you could buy one of these PCI extensions. Uh, obviously you want to make sure that it's got some kind of a heat sink to, to drag the heat away from these, um, from these boards. And, uh, yeah, you could stick it into the PCI slot if yours doesn't, uh, have it. So my old motherboard does not have it. So I'm using this, but my new motherboard has an NVMe slot and I can boot my C drive off of it. So I'm going to put my C drive onto this one from this. So my C drive used to be on this, ran slow. Then I moved my C drive onto this, ran a little bit faster. Actually, it ran a lot faster. And then now I'm moving it onto this, where I want to have my C drive, uh, boot up drive, as well as all my application install. I know it's only 500 gig, um, but I don't think I would need anything more than that. So everything would run faster directly off the uh, new motherboard. Not to mention everything else is faster on my new machine, but I just want to talk to you about, uh, or give you an overview of the evolution of hard drives. So if you are doing a PC build, um, and you don't plan on having much storage, let's say, you know, one terabyte or two terabytes is all you need, you can just go straight to this. There's no need to obviously buy any of these, although the people still use these, uh, these drives, but they, they only use them for like archiving or put data on there that you're not going to be accessing a lot, uh, because some of the newer ones, they just go to sleep when you're not using it. And then only when you, let's say like this is your F drive where it's your backup. Or after where you keep some old videos and uh, only when you go to use it, they wake up and start spinning. So this way they tend to be much more reliable nowadays. But your C drive, which is where you boot up off your machine, I would go straight to this. And if you don't, if there's no need to, to keep a lot of storage. You could just have this one drive. You don't need to get this. And you also don't need to get this. So you save some money there. Although these are more money. So for example, two terabytes nowadays for this one. It's probably maybe 150 or something like that, but two terabytes for this one is about 200. Um, these for like a hundred dollars, you can get four terabytes. So you can just see that, right? It's, it's bigger. Uh, it's lower cost. You can put four terabytes of data on here and only spend about a hundred dollars. Here for a hundred dollars, you get one terabyte. Here for a hundred dollars, you may get one and a half or maybe even two terabytes. You can get them on sale. So this is pretty much twice the price of this. It's Oh, I also wanted to mention this. Um, uh, just like the way this PCI interface connects for this, uh, for the NVMe slot, you can also use this, this kind of a, a cable with the USB C on the other end to connect one of these. And now you have like an external hard drive. You just plug in for the power and, uh, so if I do this right, for the power and, and the data. And once you have this and you can plug this to a USB C, now you could use this as an external hard drive move from one machine to another machine pretty easy. So you don't have to have it inside your, your hard drive, uh, I'm sorry, inside your PC case. Uh, so you can use it as a backup storage if you want and, you know, pull these out and keep it in a safe place like photos or videos or, you know, your memories and st things like that. Um, so, so, they, so these make a backup device now that they've gone so um, lower in, in price compared to what they used to be. Anyway, bottom line is I just wanted to tell you that the storage has grown significantly over the years and they're getting faster and they're getting more expensive and you can actually put more and more data inside them and uh, they're, they're getting more reliable um, as long as you keep the heat away. Um, so there's nothing mechanical in these to move around. So hence they're much more reliable than one of these drives. Say that. Um, so yeah, uh, I have more videos coming out for the build and uh, and I'll obviously do a review on this one, uh, the, the MSI motherboard. And I have memory for my new machine and also have my new CPU. So I'm going to be doing a build on that. 